and uh, today's topic is on vital investments. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the first edition of Your Property Show. Now, as the name suggests, this is your show, um, so we would like to take some calls from you. Um, we're starting off the first show with myself, Hasina Momtaz, and also our property expert, Kamru Ali. Um, now, because it's our first show, uh, we'll tell you a little bit about ourselves. Um, I'm Hasina Momtaz. My background is in media and communications. I've been a journalist and a broadcaster, as well as the editor of a newspaper, and I'm a former advisor to the Mayor of London. I did that for almost 10 years at City Hall. I advised both Ken Livingston and Boris Johnson. Um, I've also actually been a news broadcaster on this very channel here in the past. With me is Kamru Ali, but everybody calls him Cam, um, and he is a property investor and an expert in, in the field. He's currently the managing director of the District One Estates Group, uh, which focuses on property investment and developments. He's also a tra trained accountant and mortgage advisor and has over 20 years. I mean, I can't uh, say enough about his level of experience and qualification in this field. Um, so today's dis discussion is going to be about buy to lets. And some of the um, topics that we'll be discussing within this is why you should consider you know, buy to let as an investment. We'll also be looking at where you should purchase your investment property, things like how the stamp duty changes, which will be coming into effect from April 2016, uh, will affect your investment, and taxation, house predictions for 2016. Um, we'll be answering your questions on things like mortgages, are they difficult to ex uh, obtain, that sort of thing. So please do call in, and there's a number of ways you can do that. You can ring in direct to the studio, or you can email us or go to our website and I'll give those details in just a moment. But for now, I'll pass over to Cam. Uh, alaikum. Yes, uh, today's topic is going to be on buy to let investments. So if anybody wants to call in, you can call in or email as well, I believe. And uh, we'll be happy to answer your calls. Um, yeah, so should we uh, discuss why people, you, you asked me earlier why should people consider buy to let investments? So, yeah, yeah. so there's various reasons why you could. I mean, there's uh, some people invest for pension income. Oth uh, others have possibly had bad investment in uh, stocks and shares or other alternative investments. But the main reason I like to invest in property is because there's capital growth. Um, you know, you, you, you get, and plus you get regular income. Now, capital growth is you, you purchase something for 200,000 and you expect it to go up each year. And the property cycle is such that within 10 years, you expect your property investment to double. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, yeah. but our callers are quick off the mark. We've oh, already really? got somebody <laughs> who's run through. So can we take the first caller, please? What's your question? Can you start with giving us your name and then your question? Hello? Hello, can you give your name and your, f and your question? Welcome to the property show. Hello? 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 Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you for calling in. You're the first caller of our yes, first sir. edition of our show. So welcome uh, and thank you for dialing in. What's your name? Uh, uh, can I speak to Bengali, please? Yes, yes, of you can. Of course you yeah. can. Hold okay. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. ख but um, it's possible onko to you know income after eta je paisa khoita ki aise onar shomoy eta ekta record raha lage joni kono shomoy tax ba onno ne kheu jikaito pare apnar eta somondhe so uh, it's important to keep a track record eta paisa khoita ki aise but dita parbo kono oshubidha na eta down payment dita arba okay thank you 
Thank you to our first caller, who was a little bit shy and didn't give us his name, but that's okay. Um, I think I'll very quickly give out the website and the email address. So the email, if you, if you don't want to call into the studio, you can email us your question at yourproperty at ntveurope.net. That's yourproperty at ntveurope.net. I'll also give our website address. You can uh, send your questions in through the website, which is www.webmail.ntveurope.net. I'll quickly repeat that, www.webmail.ntveurope.net. So you've got all sorts of amazing social media ways to get in touch with us, but please do get in touch and send your questions through. So as I was saying, it's one, about one, creation. Yes, one of the main reasons is you get uh, you, you capital growth in property and also at the same time you have a regular in income. So if mm. it's a residential buy-to-let, you expect to get a nice uh, monthly rent from it, mm. uh, which will pay towards your mortgage or whatever. And you can leverage, leverage in as in you're only putting in 20% or 25% and the bank is financing the rest of it. And then Therefore, you're leveraging on that massive asset that you could hopefully uh, will have that capital growth. And in the UK, on average, um, every 10 years, property prices doubles. Right. So you're on a winner. And it's a long Is term. Is that a investment. general trend? It's a general trend. So on average, it okay. doubles every 10 years. Uh, so that's one of the key reasons why people invest in buy-to-lets and um, obviously it gives you a secure monthly income, mm. uh, generally speaking, and, and um, yeah, it's, uh, so the rents, rents also go up in, uh, over time, so you get mm. a good rental income and uh, good capital growth. And as you were saying earlier, it's a good capital, uh, wealth creation, mm. as in you build up one after another and um, you could end up with having a nice portfolio and generate good income for yourself. Okay. We do have another caller waiting, but mm. you mentioned about rental income yes. going up. Mm. I mean, is that across the board, across the country? Or I know that's a trend in London. But yes, other parts it, of the it varies from region to region, but depending on where the demand is, I guess. Mm. So where you have places uh, the demand is extremely high, obviously there will be an increase in rent, um, particularly if it's London, then mm. the rents have been going up uh, in the last few years. And uh, if it's close to transportation, shop, shopping centers. Mm. So yeah, I mean, it's uh, rents constantly go up. I've never known it to ever go down. So it's okay. just like the property prices go up generally, it, rents yeah. do go up as well. So maybe we can consider that in a bit more detail when we mm. talk about where sure. to look for buy-to-let properties. Let's go to our second caller. Mm. Hello. Hello, Salaam Alaikum. Hello, Salaam Alaikum. Can you please give your name and your question? Hello. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. Thank you for dialing in to your property show. What's your question? Uh, yeah, actually, um, I would like to um, know some information uh, regarding... Um, because I'm a student uh, in here, uh, in, in student status. Okay. So if, we w if I would like to buy any property in UK, and um, want to get the investment money from uh, back home in Bangladesh. So, um, is that possible, or um, what do you uh, what do you think? You do you have any advice for me? Absolutely, it and is. And all for one more caution: mm. uh, uh, to buy a property here, am I be able to get um, help to buy like government legislation one? Yeah. So answer to your first question is yes, absolutely. If your family is sending you money, you can buy a buy-to-let or investment property. Uh, I don't believe the bank will lend to you because you're a student and I'm assuming you have a student visa. The banks do not tend to lend to on a buy-to-let to students uh, because you know mortgage is a long-term commitment and uh, you have a short visa as a student. It's highly unlikely they'll lend to you, but certainly you can buy cash as an investor or your family's investment. And uh, your second now If I would like to pay like 75% and 20% if I would like to get... Um, Yes, uh, that is, um, yeah, th there are certain requirements for the banks for you to lend. So you would, all, you would have to have at least one residential property to get onto the buy-to-let investment and you'd have to uh, have the correct residential status here as well. So because you're a student, I don't believe any of the banks lend to students on a buy-to-let investment unfortunately. So that's one thing. And secondly, um, you said about the government, there is help available out there, but I don't believe is available to overseas students. Okay, Baya? 
Thank you for your question and thank you for answering that. Yeah. Um, we're going to go to a break in a few minutes, but I think uh, one of the things people will be wondering is what type of buy to let they should consider and what are the sort of areas. I know you've covered that briefly. Do you want to talk about that? And then maybe after the break, we'll talk about the government changes. Sure, yes. I mean, to, uh, on w what type of property. So it depends, again, region to region. It's in London in particular, right? One bedroom flats have a huge demand, very high demand. Mm. So, uh, you know, I always try and buy with property that has good demand so you don't get any void periods and the rents are mm. good and try and buy property under value. So rather than mm. overpriced, so it's good to, you ha it's very important to view many properties as possible before you start making offers on property and speak to the local agents. They know whether one bedroom or two bedroom or three bedroom houses have mm. the most demand in that area. Yeah. So, yeah, you've got, to, you've got to build up some knowledge as you would do in any other investments or any other business. You have to sort of do your be, uh, research into what sort of properties have the maximum demand because you don't want to purchase something and it's lying vacant because mm -hmm. you, and you have to pay the mortgage on it. So, yes, you, you do have to do, I mean, uh, like I said, one bedrooms tend to have the most uh, demand for rentals. Okay. Because young professional, and you, it's possible that, you know, if it's close to a station, okay. more likely you have um, even... Uh, bigger demand than something that is maybe 15 minutes walk okay. away from the uh, station. Yeah. So we've got another caller, but to yeah. kind of encapsulate what you've just said, mm. uh, do your research, get to know your local area and yes. engage with estate agents yes. and find out what mm. the demand is in so that particular, for that particular area. area. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Right, we've got two callers waiting. Um, so can we take the first caller before we go to the break? Okay. Hello. Welcome to your property Hello. show. What's your question? Uh, hi, I just want to know, you know, if I want to extension my house uh, three meters from my house, is it, uh, do I need a permission or I don't need permission? No, so you want to uh, extend. So there's a new initiative by the government uh, within uh, three meters is within a permitted development. Okay. You don't actually require planning permission. Uh, it's important that you get building regulations so that you, you, you get a certificate to say it's been built properly. Although you don't require planning permission, you do have to inform the local authority that you are extending and uh, get party wall agreements with neighbors and stuff like that. So if I was you know, ch check it with the local authority that you are building this extension and uh, it's very important that you do uh, do party wall as well as um, the building control okay. okay thank you we're going to move on to our next caller and take this quick question very quickly before we go to the break so can we have our next caller please hello hello assalamu alaikum welcome to the show thank you for calling in what's your question What's your question to our property expert, Cam Ali? Would you like to state your question? All right, well, I think we've lost that caller. Hopefully, they'll be back after the break. So for now, uh, for three minutes, we're going to go to a break, but make sure you join us on the other side. Thank you.